This channel has been established for visually impaired people. For the visually impaired people, voice narration and a written expression are also provided for the hearing impaired. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. New Zealand English NZE is the dialect of the English language used in New Zealand its language code in ISO and Internet standards as an NZ the English language was established in New Zealand by colonists during the 19th century it is one of the newest native speaker varit of the English language in existence, a variety which has developed and become distinctive only in the last 150 years. The most distinctive influences on New Zealand English have come from Australian English, English in Southern England, Irish English, Scottish English, the prestige received pronunciation RP, and Maori New Zealand English is most similar to Australian English in pronunciation, with some key differences contents 1 dictionaries 2 historical development 3 phonology 31 vowels 311 short front vowels 312 conditioned mergers 313 other vowels 32 consonants 321 other consonants 33 other features 4 vocabulary 41 Australian English influences 42 American English influences 43 New Zealandisms 44 differences from Australian English 5 usage 6 Maori influence 61 pronunciation of Maori place names 7 dialects 8 spelling 9 see also 10 notes 11 bibliography 12 further reading 13 external links dictionaries the first comprehensive dictionary dedicated to New Zealand English was probably the Hyman New Zealand Dictionary, published in 1979 edited by Harry Orsman 1928–2002. It is a 1,337-page book, with information relating to the usage and pronunciation of terms that were widely accepted throughout the English-speaking world and those peculiar to New Zealand it includes a one-page list of the approximate date of entry into common parlance of the many terms found in New Zealand English but not elsewhere Elsewhere, such as Haka 1827, Boahai 1920, and Bach 1905. A second edition was published in 1989 with the cover subtitle The First Dictionary of New Zealand English and New Zealand Pronunciation. A third edition, edited by Nelson Wadi, was published as the Reed Dictionary of New Zealand English by Reed Publishing in 2001. Orsman's next dictionary achievement was the New Zealand Dictionary, published by New House Publishers in 1994. It was co edited by Elizabeth Orsman. A second edition was published in 1995, edited by Elizabeth Orsman in 1997. Oxford University Press produced the Harry Orsman edited the Dictionary of New Zealand English, a dictionary of New Zealandisms on historical principles a 981-page book which it claimed was based on over 40 years of research This research started with Orsman's 1951 thesis and continued with his editing this dictionary to assist with and maintain this work. The New Zealand Dictionary Centre was founded in 1997 It has published several more. Dictionaries of New Zealand English, including the New Zealand Oxford Paperback Dictionary, edited by New Zealand lexicographer Tony Diverson in 1998, culminating in the 1,374-page The New Zealand Oxford Dictionary in 2004, by Tony Diverson and Graham Kennedy A second, revised edition of the New Zealand Oxford Paperback Dictionary was published in 2006, this time using standard lexicographical regional markers to identify the New Zealand content, which were absent from the first edition Another authoritative work is the Collins English Dictionary first published in 1979 by HarperCollins, which contains an abundance of well-cited New Zealand words and phrases, drawing from the 650 million word Bank of English, a British research facility set up at the University of Birmingham in 1980 and funded by Collins Publishers Although this is a British dictionary of international English there has always been a credited New Zealand advisor for the New Zealand content, namely Professor Ian Gordon from 1970. 79 until 2002 and Professor Elizabeth Gordon from the University of Canterbury since 2003 New Zealand specific dictionaries compiled from the Collins English Dictionary include the Collins New Zealand Concise English Dictionary 1982, Collins New Zealand School Dictionary 1999 and Collins New Zealand Paperback Dictionary 2009 Australia's Macquarie Dictionary was first published in 1981, and has since become the authority on Australian English it has always included an abundance of of New Zealand words and 
Phrases additional to the mutually shared words and phrases of both countries Every edition has retained a New Zealander as advisor for the New Zealand content, the first being Harry Orsman and the most recent being noted New Zealand lexicographer Laurie Bauer A more light-hearted look at English as spoken in New Zealand, a personal Kiwi Yankee dictionary, was written by the American-born University of Otago psychology lecturer Louis Leland in 1980 This slim volume lists many of the potentially confusing and or misleading terms for American Americans visiting or emigrating to New Zealand A second edition was published in 1990 Historical development from the 1790s, New Zealand was visited by British, French and American whaling, sealing and trading ships Their crews traded European goods with the indigenous Maori The first actual settlers to New Zealand were mainly from Australia, many ex-convicts or escaped convicts sailors, explorers and traders from Australia and other parts of Europe also settled in 1788 The colony of New South Wales of Australia had been been founded the colony included most of New Zealand except for the southern half of the South Island formed two years prior in London, the New Zealand Company announced its plans to establish colonies in New Zealand in 1839 The continuing lawlessness of many of the informally established Australian and European settlers spurred the British to take better control of the colony which until then the British had largely ignored, having concentrated mainly on managing Australia from 1840 there was considerable European settlement, primarily from England, Wales, Scotland and Ireland, and to a lesser extent the United States, India, China, and various parts of continental Europe Some 400,000 settlers came from Britain, of whom 300,000 stayed permanently most were young people and 250,000 babies were born New Zealand ceased to be part of New South Wales and became a British colony on 1 July 1841 Gold discoveries in Otago 1861 and Westland 1865, caused a worldwide gold rush that more than doubled the population in a short period, from 71,000 in 1859 to 164,000 in 1863 Between 1864 and 1865, under the New Zealand Settlements Act 1863, 13 ships carrying citizens of England, Ireland and South Africa arrived to New Zealand under the Waikato Immigration Scheme in the 1870s and 1880s, several thousand Chinese men, mostly from Guangdong province, migrated to New Zealand to work on the South Island goldfields Although the first Chinese migrants had been invited by the Otago provincial government they quickly became the target of hostility from settlers and laws were enacted specifically to discourage them from coming to New Zealand thereafter. The European population of New Zealand grew explosively from fewer than 1,000 in 1831 to 500,000 by 1881. By 1911, the number of European settlers had reached a million. With this colourful history of unofficial and official settlement of peoples from all over Europe, Australia, South Africa, and Asia, and the intermingling of the people with the indigenous Maori brought about what would eventually evolve into a New Zealand accent and a unique regional English lexicon, a distinct New Zealand variant of the English language language has been recognized since at least 1912, when Frank Arthur Swinnerton described it as a «carefully modulated murmur». From the beginning of the haphazard Australian and European settlements and latter official British migrations, a new dialect began to form by adopting Maori words to describe the different flora and fauna of New Zealand, for which English did not have any words of its own The New Zealand accent appeared first in towns with mixed populations of immigrants from Australia, England, Ireland, and Scotland These included the militia towns of the North Island and the gold mining towns of the South Island in more homogeneous towns such as those in Otago and Southland, Settled mainly by people from Scotland, the New Zealand accent took longer to appear since the latter 20th century New Zealand society has gradually divested itself of its fundamentally British roots and has adopted influences from all over the world, especially in the early 21st century when New Zealand experienced an increase of non-British immigration which has since brought about a more prominent multinational society the Internet, television, movies and popular music have all brought international influences into New Zealand society and the New Zealand lexicon Americanization of New Zealand society and language has subtly and gradually been taking place since World War II and especially since the 1970s, as has happened also in neighbouring Australia phonology variation in New Zealand Vowels Phoneme Phonetic Realization Lexical Set Bauer et al. WP Cultivated Broad Kit Comma Dress E Trap A Face AA E Price E Ah Mouth AO Ah Goat 
O, near, I, R, square, E, R. Not all New Zealanders have the same accent, as the level of cultivation i.e. the closeness to received pronunciation of every speaker's accent differs the phonology in this section is of an educated speaker of New Zealand English, and uses a transcription system designed by Bauer et al. 2007 specifically to faithfully represent the New Zealand accent it transcribes some of the vowels differently, whereas the approximant, R, is transcribed with the symbol even in phonemic transcription vowels monophthongs of New Zealand English. Closing diphthongs of New Zealand English Centering diphthongs of New Zealand English The vowels of New Zealand English are similar to that of other non-rhotic dialects such as Australian English and RP, but with some distinct variations, which are indicated by the transcriptions for New Zealand vowels in the tables below. Monophthongs of New Zealand English Front Central Back Short Long Short Long Short Long Close I Fleece, Happy. I I, Goose, U, Close Mid E Dress, Kit, Roses, Comma, Letter, R, Nurse, R. Foot, O. Thought, North, Force, RR, Open, Mid, Trap, A, Lot, Cloth, Open, Strut, Palm, Bath, Start, R, Diphthongs of New Zealand English Bower et al. WP Keyword AA, E, Face E, A, Price O, Choice, O, Goat A O, A, Mouth I. R, Near E, R, Square, R, Cure However, vowel charts show that, I, aren't accurate transcriptions, and, I, Approximate the actual pronunciation closer short front vowels in New Zealand English The short I of kit is a central vowel not phonologically distinct from schwa, the vowel in unstressed the, both of which are a close mid-central unrounded vowel, contrasting sharply with the vowel heard in Australia Recent acoustic studies featuring both Australian and New Zealand voices show the accents were more similar before the Second World War and the kit vowel has undergone rapid centralisation in New Zealand English This has led to a long-running joke between Australians and New Zealanders whereby Australians accuse New Zealanders of saying fush and chups for fish and chips and in turn new. Zealanders accuse Australians of saying fish and cheeps in light of Australia's own kit vowel shift in actual fact the kit vowel can sometimes be mistaken for the nurse vowel in some NZ speakers thus the words bitch and birch may be difficult to discern by a non-New Zealander, although the latter vowel is very commonly realised with lip rounding in some broad New Zealand accents the kit vowel can be mistaken for the foot vowel so that words like fit may sound like foot like South African English, some Australian and some Southern American dialects. The dress vowel, e, has moved to become a close mid vowel, although the New Zealand, e, can be closer to often. It is similar to New Zealand near vowel, i, which is a centering diphthong, so that pronunciation of words like bed and beard and fed and feared sound alike when spoken by New Zealanders, although phonemically, they are still considered to be bed and fed, not bid and fid. In cultivated New Zealand English, pronunciation of the dress vowel remains the same as regular British, North American, and Australian English speakers conditioned mergers the near i and square e vowels are increasingly being merged especially since the beginning of the 21st century so that here high now rhymes with there i and bear b and beer b and rarely ely and really ely are homophones thus air new zealand i n j z land and ear new zealand i n j z land sound Identical there is some debate as to the quality of the merged vowel, but the consensus appears to be that it is towards a close variant. This merger is not unique to New Zealand and also occurs in East Anglia in the UK and South Carolina in the United States, although the quality of the merged vowel in these accents is much more open, i.e. or before, l, the vowels, i, and, i, as in real, i, l, versus real, ill, as well as, and, dal, dl, versus dol, dl, and sometimes, and pull pl versus pool pl e and ellen elm versus allen lane and and full fl versus phil fl may be merged other vowels as with australian english the start palm vowel in words like park pk com km and farm fm is central or even front of central in terms of tongue position and non rhotic this is the same vowel sound used by speakers of the boston accent and other non rhotic areas of northeastern new england in the united states thus the phrase park the car is said identically by a new zealander australian or bostonian cant is also pronounced knt in both both New Zealand and Australia and not kanti. Unlike the pronunciation found in United States and Canada the most obvious vowel shift in New Zealand English from other kinds is the trap vowel, which is usually realised as open mid this vowel shift is shared by South African English Speakers and is one of the main reasons American English speakers may mistake New Zealanders for South Africans in the phrase the cat sat on the mat, Kate Saint and, MT, this is heard by non-New Zealanders as the cat sat on the mat. 
a laptop, LPDP, is heard by non-New Zealanders as laptop and blanket, blacked, as blanket. Some older Southland speakers use the trap vowel rather than the start vowel in dance, chance, and castle, so that they are pronounced, respectively, deans, teens, casel, rather than, respectively, dns, tns, and ksl. The nurse vowel is rounded and often fronted in the region of the thought vowel, o, is a close mid-back rounded vowel, as is in Australian and South African English consonants New Zealand English. English is mostly non rhotic with linking and intrusive R, except for speakers with the so called Southland Burr, a semi rhotic, Scottish influenced dialect heard principally in Southland and parts of Otago. Older Southland speakers use variably after vowels, but today younger speakers use only with the nurse vowel and occasionally with the second vowel in letter. Younger Southland speakers pronounce in third term but not in farm cart a fairly accurate representation of the rhotic southern New Zealand accent was depicted in The World's Fastest Indian, a movie about the life of New Zealander Bert Munro and his achievements at Bonneville Speedway on the DVD release of the movie One of the special features is Roger Donaldson's original 1971 documentary Offerings to the God of Speed featuring the real Burt Monroe his and others Southern New Zealand accent is definitive among R less speakers, however, non prevocalic is sometimes pronounced in a few words, including Ireland, Elm tilde Elm, Merely, Millie tilde Millie, Air tilde, and the name of the letter R tilde L, is dark in all positions, and is often vocalized in the syllable coda. This varies in different regions and between different socioeconomic groups. The younger, lower social class speakers vocalize L. Most of the time, other consonants New Zealand English has the wine wine merger, thus, the distinction between with as in which and as in which has disappeared except in the speech of older speakers as with Australian English and American English the intervocalic t may be flapped so that the sentence use a little bit of butter may be pronounced j z l b v b other features new zealand english has the trap bath split words like dance chance plant and grant are pronounced with an sound as in southern england and south australia However, for many decades prior to World War II there existed an almost 50-50 split between the pronunciation of dance as DNS, or Dean's plant as place NT, or plant, etc. Some New Zealand speakers have the salary celery merger and would thus realize both L and L, as, for instance, elephant would be pronounced pairs such as elegy, LD, and allergy, LD, and Ellen, Elm, and Allen, Lane, would now be homophonous as an, respectively. This merger has been noted since at least 1939 when it was then commented on by Arnold Wall some New Zealanders pronounce past participles such as grown, n, thrown, theta n, and moan, mn, with two syllables, the latter containing a schwa, n, not found in other accents by contrast, grown, n, thrown, theta n, and moan per meter n, are all unaffected, meaning these word pairs can be distinguished by ear the trans prefix is usually pronounced, teens, this produces mixed pronunciation of the as in words like transplant, tnspel nt, however, tns, is also heard the name of the letter h is almost almost always, a8, as in North American, and is almost never aspirated, h8, the name of the letter Z is usually the British, Canadian and Australian Z, Z, however the alphabet song for children is sometimes sung ending with, Z, in accordance with the rhyme where Z is universally pronounced Z in places, names, terms, or titles, such as Z Z top. LZ Landing Zone, JZ Celebrity, or Z Nation TV show New Zealanders follow universal pronunciation The word foyer is usually pronounced, fo, as in Australian English, rather than, foye, as in British English The word with is almost always pronounced, w, though, w theta, may be found in some minority groups The word and combining form graph is pronounced both, f, and, f, the word data is commonly pronounced, dt, with, day 8, being the second commonest, and, dt, being very rare words such as control Tribute and distribute are predominantly pronounced with the stress on the second syllable. Tri variants with the stress on the first syllable also occur common in spoken New Zealand as the use of the word like as a quotative, discourse marker, or as a hedge, similar to its use in valley speak, belonging to the valley girl stereotype of the United States. This appears to have been adopted by young New Zealanders during the 1980s when valley speak became popularized internationally through music and media of the time. Katie Drager, associate professor in sociolinguistics at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, showed that New Zealand English speakers have distinct uses for like and that they pronounce each type of like slightly differently so that e.g. he was like yeah and she was like no would have a different pronunciation from and like it was raining. 
Australian English did not develop in this way and thus this feature remains a distinct difference between Australian and New Zealand colloquial English New Zealand English is well known for the frequent use of the word a where it is used by New Zealanders after sentences to mean many things such as is it isn't it it definitely is excuse me pardon do you agree that is true what are you serious didn't you i mean what i said etc the maori word nei has similar meaning and usage the New Zealand usage of the word a is also increasingly filtering into Australian English and can often be heard in similar usages especially by Western Australians and Sydneysiders, possibly due to the higher numbers of New Zealand immigrants living in those areas Queenslanders too claim the use of a to be a marker of their local dialect which is unattributed to any New Zealand influence the frequency of the Australian derived yeah no marker is occurring more in New Zealand English although whereas the age demographic in Australian usage is 35 to 49 this is not conclusive in New Zealand usage Australian usage has been been documented at least as early as 2002 vocabulary there are a number of dialectal words and phrases used in New Zealand English these are mostly in formal terms that are more common in casual speech a considerable number of loan words have also been taken from the Maori language as well as from Australian English see the separate section below New Zealand adopted decimal currency in 1967 and the metric system in 1974 despite this several imperial measures are still widely encountered and usually understood such as feet and inches for a person's height pounds and ounces for an infant's birth weight and in colloquial terms such as referring to drinks in pints in the food manufacturing industry in New Zealand both metric and non-metric systems of weight are used and usually understood owing to raw food products being imported from both metric and non-metric countries however per the December 1976 Weights and Measures Amendment Act, all foodstuffs must be retailed using the metric system in general, the knowledge of non-metric units is lessening the word spud for potato, now common throughout the English-speaking world, originated in New Zealand English as with Australian English, but in contrast to most other forms forms of the language, some speakers of New Zealand English use both the terms bath and bathe as verbs, with bath used as a transitive verb e.g. I will bath the dog, and bathe used predominantly, but not exclusively, as an intransitive verb e.g. did you bathe both the words amongst and among are used, as in British English the same is true for two. Other pairs, whilst Station for a large farm, palm or palmy an Englishman, wowser killjoy, and ute pickup truck American English influences advancing from its British and Australian English origins. New Zealand English has developed to include many Americanisms and American vocabulary in preference over British terms as well as directly borrowed American vocabulary. Some examples of American words used instead of British words in New Zealand English are bobby pin for British hair pin, muffler for the British silencer, truck for the British lorry, station wagon for the British estate car, stove over cooker, creek over brook, hope chest over bottom drawer, eggplant instead of aubergine, hardware store instead of ironmonger, median strip for central reservation, stroller for pushchair, push-up for press-up, potato chip instead of potato crisp, license plate for registration plate, cell phone or cell for British and Australian mobile phone and mobile, and popsicle instead of British ice lolly or Australian icy pole directly borrowed American vocabulary include the boonies, bucks dollars, Bushwhack fell timber, but replacing British, Australian ass although ass can still be used, ding dent, dude, duplex, faggot and fag replacing British poof and poofter, figure to think or conclude, consider, hightail it, homeboy, hooker, lagoon, lube oil change, man in place of mate or bro in direct address, major to study or qualify in a subject, to be over be fed up, rig large truck, sheltered workshop workplace for disabled persons, spat a small. Argument, subdivision, and tavern New Zealand's single parliament is called the House of Representatives as opposed to House of Commons in UK and Canada New Zealandisms in addition to word and phrase borrowings from Australian, British and American English, New Zealand has its own unique words and phrases derived entirely in New Zealand not considering slang, some of these New Zealandisms are, Aussie noun Australia this extension of the term to mean the country is unique to New Zealand in Australia and internationally, Aussie means Australian person or thing, as opposed to Australia the country the normal adjectival usage is also used in New Zealand big huge adj large object big huge building, extensive big huge mess, glaring big huge mistake choice adj or interge excellent, good core interge many uses, the most common being a form of greeting, or a contraction of cheers most common heard in core, bro. It is also used as an alternative to good on you dairy noun a corner shop, convenience store fang it phrase to go fast. 
Get your beans phrase get what's coming to you, be punished gib board, Gibraltar board noun the common NZ term for drywall, plasterboard interior wall aligning a genericized trademark, gib is a trademark of Winstone wallboards limited good as gold phrase all is well found in other forms of English as well handle noun the pint 500 milliliters glass of beer with a handle, as sold in pubs hard out, hard used to show agreement, or used to show emphasis, intensity examples, agreement, yeah hard, hard out. He was running hard out heaps adjective, adverb abundant, plenty, plentifully examples, there are heaps of cops surrounding the house. I love you heaps. Give it heaps, give it your best effort. IWI noun Maori word for tribe jandals noun the NZ term for flip-flops originally an importer's trademark name derived from Japanese sandals Kai noun Maori word for food kiwi aj not only does kiwi mean a New Zealand person, but it is sometimes used to replace the word New Zealand in NZ businesses or titles, such as kiwi rail and kiwi bank or New Zealand related nouns, e.g. kiwiism. This practice may be seen by non-New Zealanders as overly kitsch or cute it is also used to address something that is particularly related to New Zealand, e.g. that house is pretty kiwi. Luncheon sausage noun, Devon sausage also called fritz or Belgium in some parts of New Zealand metal road noun a dirt road overlaid with gravel to assist drainage and keep dust down, typically found in rural settings munted edge, slang a destroyed, trashed, broken bee of a person, weird or odd polony noun a small cocktail sausage, dyed red and made of mixed processed meats polony has other meanings in Australia, South Africa and the UK pooped edge tired found in other forms of English as well puckerud edge broken, busted. Wrecked from Maori pakaru puku noun Maori word for stomach belly ranch slider ranch slider noun the universal NZ term for a sliding door usually of aluminium frame and containing glass panels a genericized trademark ranch slider is a registered trademark of Fletcher window shot acknowledgement or inters thank you to express joy give praise well done skull verb to drink a glass or handle see above of beer in one go stoked ADV very pleased delighted sweet as inters cool awesome. Tar Seal Road Noun Chip Seal Road Tiki Tour Noun A guided tour, exploration, a meandering route taken in order to waste time togs Noun informal term for swimsuit for either gender Town house Noun A small self-contained, freestanding house with little or no backyard, often with a shared driveway with neighbouring houses The NZ meaning is unique and differs from the American, Asian, Australian and European meaning of townhouse typically terraced houses as well as the older UK meaning city houses of nobility Tramping Noun Tramp verb bushwalking, hiking usage is exclusive to New Zealand Tucker noun food up the Boahai, up the Puhoi, in the Wap Waps, to be lost or stranded, of unknown whereabouts or when unwilling to divulge whereabouts in the outback, or in the boondocks Wahini noun Maori word for woman, wife we adjective one a short time, a little bit, as in my chicken was a wee bit overcooked, too small, little, as in he was a wee boy. This is directly from Scottish English and is in common formal use throughout New Zealand whereas in other English-speaking countries, apart from Scotland, this usage is uncommon or used only informally it is not part of Australian English, for example Fano noun Maori word for family whiteware for major kitchen appliances white goods in UK differences from Australian English many of these relate to words used to refer to common items, often based on which major brands become eponyms NZ Australia translation to US, UK English cell phone cell. Mobile. Delhi convenience store, a small store selling mainly food duvet Duna Duna is an Australian trademark for a brand of duvet which has replaced the term duvet entirely ice block popsicle ice block icy pole ice pop jandals sandals thongs flip flops thong clothing g string thong clothing. Candy floss fairy floss candy floss in the UK, cotton candy in the US cattle stop cattle grid cattle grid a device for preventing cattle wandering on country road Sally Salvos a follower of the Salvation Army church speed bump judder bar speed bump speed hump a raised section of road used to deter excessive speed drinking fountain bubbler drinking. A device designed to provide drinking water This term is also used in Rhode Island and Wisconsin Shrimp prawn NZ usage follows general international usage whereby shrimp refers to smaller sized species such as in a shrimp cocktail and prawn to larger varieties whereas in Australia prawn is the sole term for both no exit no through road signage for a road with a dead end, a cul-de-sac tog swimming.
Swimwear, swimming costumes, or other clothes designed to be worn in water Twink liquid paper white out correction fluid Note that Twink is a New Zealand brand name which has entered the vernacular as a generic term, being the first product of its kind introduced in the 1980s The common Australian general term is white out liquid paper is also a brand name which is sometimes used as a generic term in Australia or New Zealand as with other countries but not Australia The European brand Tip X is also available in New Zealand and is sometimes used used as a generic term as well motorway freeway in Australia controlled access highways can be named as either freeway a term not used in NZ or motorway depending on the state howdy good day good day hello etc although the greeting good day is as common in New Zealand as it is in Australia the term howdy can be heard throughout New Zealand but not frequently in Australia this contraction of how do you do is actually of English origin South English dialect CA 1860 however is contemporarily associated with Southern American English particularly Texan where it is a common greeting it is possible the NZ origin is from the earlier British usage marker pen felt tips highlighter text a highlighter a marker pen tramping trekking hiking travel through open or more often forested areas on footnotes. Carrot the terms mobile phone and cell phone are used interchangeably, with cell being the predominant term, compared with preferring a single term as occurs in Australia, the UK and the US. Carrot A B C D E F G A genericized trademark carrot crib is mainly used in the southern part of the South Island. Bach in the rest of New Zealand carrot in larger cities in New Zealand convenience store is used due to immigration and to current NZ law forbidding a dairy from selling alcohol, though dairy is used commonly in conversation in New Zealand in the 1950s and 1960s milk bar referred to a soda shop in some states of Australia milk bar is used, other states use deli, deli is used in New Zealand to refer to a store selling high quality meats carrot the term jutter bar is regional in its usage in New Zealand, and is rarely encountered in some parts of the country carrot used in New South Wales and Victoria carrot Australian English terms for swimwear vary from region to region carrot refers to swim briefs. Carrot The term highlighter is also widely used in New Zealand to refer to a wide tipped pen of this sort usage. Some New Zealanders will often reply to a question with a statement spoken with a rising intonation at the end. This often has the effect of making their statement sound like another question. There is enough awareness of this that it is seen in exaggerated form in comedy parody of New Zealanders, such as in the classic 1970s comedy character Lynn of Tawa. This rising intonation can also be heard at the end of statements, which are not in response to a question question but to which the speaker wishes to add emphasis high rising terminals are also heard in Australia in informal speech some new zealanders use the third person feminine she in place of the third person neuter it as the subject of a sentence especially when the subject is the first word of the sentence the most common use of this is in the phrase she'll be right meaning either it will be okay or it is close enough to what is required Similar to Australian English are uses such as she was great car or she's a real beauty. This Maori influence main article, Maori influence on New Zealand English many local everyday words have been borrowed from the Maori language including words for Local flora, fauna, place names and the natural environment The dominant influence of Maori on New Zealand English is lexical A 1999 estimate based on the Wellington corpora of written and spoken New Zealand English put the proportion of words of Maori origin at approximately 06%, mostly place and personal names The everyday use of Maori words, usually colloquial, occurs most prominently among youth, young adults and Maori populations Examples include words like kia ora hello, or kai food, which almost all New Zealanders know Maori is ever present and has a significant conceptual influence in the legislature, government, and community agencies e.g. health and education, where legislation requires that proceedings and documents be translated into Maori under certain circumstances, and when requested political discussion and analysis of issues of sovereignty, environmental management, health, and social well-being thus rely on Maori at least in part Maori as a spoken language is particularly important wherever community consultation occurs occurs pronunciation of Maori place names The pronunciations of many Maori place names were anglicized for most of the 19th and 20th centuries, but since the 1980s increased consciousness of the Maori language has led to a shift towards using a Maori pronunciation The anglicizations have persisted most among residents of the towns in question, so it has become something of a shibboleth, with correct. <laughs>